opportunity to come here and to share this great information with the students of Brandywine High School. And it was such a positive conversation that we had. I said, absolutely, let's do this. We're trying to do some things here at Brandywine High School, and I think that his support coming in would be great. And the hope is that everyone is open to hear what he has to say. I'm pretty sure it's gonna connect with most of us. And as we all know that life isn't easy, but we press forth every single day. And so now, without further ado, we have entrepreneur, producer, songwriter, yeah, I know, right? Yeah, I got everybody's attention all of a sudden, right? Yeah, see, now, yeah, thank you. All right, without further ado, here he is from Delaware, Kevin McCove. How you guys doing today? Good? Good. So, as Mr. Long said, thank you, Mr. Long, for having me here. Thank you, Brandy Wong High School, for having me here. My name is Kevin McCove. Um, I am a songwriter, yes, I'm an artist. Um, if we want to go to the next slide, I'll fill you in. So I'm from, I'm from Delaware, from Dover. I went to Dover High School, graduated from there, and then I went to the University of Delaware where I got a degree in music management and music education. And after I was done, I was like, yo, I really want to pursue a career in music, but I don't want to be a teacher. Um, and I, no offense to any of the teachers out here, you have a very hard job. Um, and I was like, yeah, you know, I don't really want to uh, be a teacher, uh, but I want to continue to make music. So I sought out on my track to be an independent artist, a musician. And fortunately for me, in 2014, um, I got a call, Dave Matthews Band, or uh, the Backstreet Boys, rather, the Backstreet Boys tour support fell through at the Sussman Bank Center. I had a connection, they were like, hey, um, do you think that you can do this show like last minute? Of course I can do this show. So I went on to go do this show. I opened for the Backstreet Boys at Assessment of Bank Center. It went over really well, and they passed my name around. A couple of weeks later, they're like, hey, Dave Matthews Band heard about your opening. They want to know if you can open for them. So I opened for Dave Matthews Band. And through that, through Assessment of Bank Center as well as Live Nation, I was able to get a really big opportunity to open for Drake and Lil Wayne. So then the next year, as you can see on the slide, 2015, things kind of took off for my career. I got to open for Billy Joel, Wiz Khalifa, Fall Out Boy, Dave Matthews Band again, Kid Rock, J. Cole, Nicki Minaj, Lady Antebellum. So I really got to do a lot of stuff. I'm feeling like I'm on top of the world. Yes, I'm gonna be the next superstar. This is gonna be amazing. And then things kind of fell through. Like things didn't really work out the way that I thought that they were gonna work out. And along with that opportunity, there were other opportunities that I, I had that's, that didn't work out either. Because right after that, in that coming off of my high, my peak, so to speak, right? In 2015, I got an opportunity uh, through Rough House Records, it's a division of Columbia Records. They said um, they wanted to do a show. The show was a cross between like Diddy's Making the Band and American Idol. It was called America's Next Soul Star. So I make the top 10, sign the contract, we go film. We shoot, we film the whole pilot, episode, everything, that's done. A couple of months pass, nothing's happening. And I'm like, hey, what's going on? What's, what's going on with the show? Hey, we're sorry to inform you that the network decided not to pick up the television show. That opportunity fell through. Um, what I didn't get to share with the last group, actually, is that I had another opportunity as a songwriter to be on Jimmy Fallon. They had an opportunity called um, the Instant Songwriter. So I got selected to be the Instant Songwriter. I get a message, hey, this episode on Jimmy Fallon, we're deciding to not do this like skit, this sketch, um, but if another opportunity comes up, we have your information. They never call back. Right, like so I had all of these seemingly good opportunities that kind of fell through. And it put me in a position that I started to think like, wow, what am I gonna do? How am I gonna continue to sustain doing what I love and still like meet all my goals? And that's how I got into music for advertising, music for television. Um, and it just kind of changed direction. I pivoted is what some people would call it. So I still got to do what I love to do, even though things that have looked like they were gonna work out, and I didn't let that defeat me. So, if you wanna go to this next slide. 
It's like, okay, well, you got your music on TV. How do you know? How do you know if it's on TV? How do you know if it's in that? So what I want to give you right now is like some tools that you can use today. Like you can leave this auditorium and be able to do something for yourself. So how many of you use Instagram? Virtually everybody. For the people that didn't raise their hand, do you not use Instagram? No. Got you. So, how many of you post on Instagram? You post content. So less of you, still. That's, that's interesting because you're a little older than the other group. Um, so let me say this. You, the, the platform, when maybe some of your teachers as well, when it came out in about 2010, and I began to use it, right? No one knew how to use it. So everybody took pictures of their food. Literally, that was the only thing on Instagram. It was like, oh, look, I'm eating pizza. And that's what you showed people. People didn't know that you could be like, hey, look, I'm a singer or whatever, let me post my show. They didn't know, hey, I do makeup, let me post putting on makeup. Right? They had no idea to use the platform as, as a way to kind of start the business. And what I'm telling you is that every one of you have access to like your phone to be able to do this. So in the other group, what the message I gave them was like, hey, some of you can't even work. You legally can't work, but you can start a business on Instagram. You can, you can provide an income for yourself. So I'm gonna give you an example, I'm gonna frame this for you. Uh, what's your name? Daquan? All right, so. So Daquan, I'm sorry, was something funny? So Daquan, I noticed he's got, he's got a nice bracelet on. Let's say da Daquan makes bracelets, right? Daquan makes bracelets, he posts videos of himself making bracelets. He's got, he's just starting off. He's got 100 followers. He's got, a, got 100 followers, only gets 10 likes. Makes his little bracelets, does it? He bumps up, he bumps up, he gets 500 followers. He gets 500 followers and his 10 likes go to 50 likes. And he, he keeps on getting all of his bracelet supplies from like the local arts and crafts store. We're gonna call it AC Moore. So he goes to AC Moore, he gets his arts and crafts from there. But he says like, hey look, I keep doing all these videos, I get all of my supplies from AC Moore and instead of spending money on the, the twine or the beads or whatever it is, I'm gonna ask them like, hey, you know, if I shout out your store, says this to the manager, if I shout out your store, could I just get the beads for free? I come here like every weekend and they say, okay, that's, sure. And they'd say that because they think that they're getting over on you. Because they're about to get free product placement. They're about to get a free advertisement for like no money, just for a couple of beads, couple of bracelets. So Daquan keeps doing that. Keeps going back, keeps making his videos like once a week. A couple of months pass by. His followers go up again. Now he's got 5,000 followers. Now he gets 100 likes, 150 likes. And when he goes back in again, he's like, hey look, instead of getting the free beads, can I also get the free beads plus $100 a week? And they say sure, they say yes. And they say yes again, because the cost for AC Moore to keep running their ad in the paper is maybe $400 a week. The cost for AC Moore, the person who runs that particular franchise, for them to put an ad out in the, the local channels, the local commercials, a couple thousand dollars. So, Daquan has an opportunity to say, look, you don't know who's reading the newspaper. You don't know who's watching that. You don't know who's on TV, who's skipping past the commercials. You have no idea. And what I can guarantee you is that these 5,000 people, these 150 people who engage with me, they're here for me. I can guarantee and I can show you the numbers. And that's worth way more money. So he gets $100 a week. So Taekwon has a way to take 10 minutes out of his day to do something he was gonna do already. Half of you are probably posting on Instagram in some fashion, because half of you said yes. The other half can, but it's something that you're gonna do every day anyway. You're just not using the platform the right way to get it to make money for you. And this is through a process called monetization. So if you look through here, it's okay, we can go back to this one. So go forward. 
these are inser like insights on social media. Instagram gives you all of this stuff for free. It just lets you know how old the people are who visit your page, if they're male or female, so it's a girl boy, you know, what hours they're on, simple stuff. Next. Um, and this will let you know, like, even what days of the week, how many people you had an impression on. I just, like, clicked this last night real quick to show you. Um, and all of this is given to you for free on a platform you don't have to pay for to get on. And you can make money. So, now let's say that Daquan's videos are popping off. He's got the hottest bracelets in the school. Everybody gets their bracelets from him. He's already got his endorsement deal going on with the local AC Moore. And what's your name, young lady? Mars. Mars? Mars. All right. So we're gonna say that she is. We're gonna say that she's a singer. She's a singer like me. You know, she makes music like me. But she goes over to Daquan and she's like, "Hey, I notice that you post all your videos all the time. Let me put my song in the back of your video." And Daquan's like, "Yeah, sure. It's always good. I always have music going on in the back of my videos. Why not support my friend and put her music in the back of my video? Now she can make money." Because Instagram and Facebook and all of these platforms, even this building that you're sitting in right now, the school, they pay a blanket licensing fee to a PRO. So they literally spend 20, 30, 40, $50,000 so that music can be here. Anywhere that you've ever been in your life and you've walked into a room and you've heard music, that place paid for that music to be there. You just don't have to pay for it. So she can get paid based off of his views. And this is how I want you to think about using it because this is how I make my money, right? Like this is how I make a living, literally thousands of dollars a month from just hitting somebody up in their DMs. Hey, can I put my music in the back of your video? Hey, Hood Clips, can I put my music in the back of your video? Hey, ESPN, can I put my music in the back the next LeBron dunking a basketball video? And they throw it in. It doesn't cost them anything because I don't charge them to do it because I know that on the back end, after it gets 10 million views, after it gets 5,000 views, doesn't matter. When you have enough going out, money is just racking up. And every single person here can do that. So I'm saying that because when I first started, I was your age. I saw my first song when I was 16 years old. I was in Dover High School sitting in an auditorium just like this one. Is I made $10,000 selling that song. It was a PSA for Delaware State University. It was called Count Me Out. I didn't get to share this with the other group. So Count Me Out ended up being like, essentially syndicated. Is that, it was the D.A.R.E. program around when you guys were like in elementary school? No, okay, so when I was in school, there was this program called D.A.R.E. and it was it stood for Drug Abuse Resistance Education. Okay. <laughs> There was another program that got rolled out in the Midwest, and it was called Count Me Out because of the song that I wrote. And it was about abstinence. It was about teen abstinence. So I got my money from this. I'm thinking it's great. Me and my parents have no idea, you know, what contracts or like records. Like, like we have no idea. So we're just like, oh, ten thousand dollars, great. I'm like signing on everything. And then me and my homeboy Miguel Batiz. We're driving away from the Dover Mall, and there's a bumper sticker on the car in front of us. And I'm like, oh snap, there's a bumper sticker that's crazy, it's dope. And then we get down to Silver Lake, and the billboard sitting at the intersection says, count me out on it. And then the next day, my cousin calls me. He's like, yo, that count me out song that you did? There's another billboard. And I'm like, hey, I think I was supposed to make more than $10,000. And that's when I realized, whoa, I didn't, like, I didn't know anything. I had no idea, no one was in my school giving me that, that knowledge, education. I couldn't go to my music teacher and ask them, like, no one knew. Even though I was making music, that wasn't being provided for me. So I'm here to you right now, like, hey, look, I'm about to give you something that you, I know you need that I know you want, right? Because it's how every single one of you right now can take command of your whole entire life and say regardless of situation, regardless of circumstance, I can go out and I can provide an income for myself. I can give myself financial independence. And so there's a way that I like to live my life. There's a mantra that like I, I go by. and that my future can be better than my present and I have the power to make it so. 
And I want every single person here to believe that. So I want you to repeat it after me. All right, so I'm gonna say it and then you're gonna say it back to me. So my future. No, let's get it. My future can be better than my present. And I have the power to make it so. And it's because you do have the power to make it so. So you can utilize all those strategies. Can we keep clipping? Um, so this is, uh, go back. In, in the other presentation, I didn't get to do enough Q&A. And I want to kind of get to the Q&A so that you can ask enough questions. But so in my, in, in my journey of getting here, right, like I had to, I had to overcome some things. And I know that there were some of you here sitting today that like even getting on the bus to come to school or getting in your car to drive to come here, no one understands how much effort it took for you to even get into the building. And so the fact that you're here, I'm saying thank you. Like thank you for putting yourself in a position to better yourself, even though it might be difficult. And I can say that because even though I've had these great opportunities, and I was able to do cool stuff, like, yo, you open for drink, like, that's nice. When I was, when I was 16 years old, I had a kid. So when I was your age, sitting in the auditorium, I had a baby. And I was like, what do I do? I think my life is over. I have colleges looking at me. I'm the best runner in the state. I'm like, what do I do now? My life is over. But it wasn't. Because at that given present moment, I knew that I had the power to change my future. So I put it to work. And even after all those things that I told you, like, okay, this didn't work out, that didn't work out, that didn't work out, like overall, yeah, it worked out. And so there's a guy that I brought along with me. He's a spectacular artist. I met him at the time that he was signing his deal with Atlantic Records. He just put out a single two weeks ago with Tory Lanez. Uh, and I want you to be able to ask him any question that you want to ask him. If you want to come out now, his name is Royal. Real quick, real quick, real quick, real quick. I just want to thank everybody um, for coming out. I want to thank Kevin for bringing me. I want to thank the faculty, um, your teachers, and, and your faculty, they care a lot about you. So. We'll do a Q and A. We'll talk to you guys. We'll take some pictures. We'll do all of that. So uh, everybody, give your attention to, to Kevin, and then we'll go from there. So if you have any questions about anything right now, is certainly your time to ask. We'll do a Q and A. All right. So if you have any questions, you can raise your hand, and I can come to you. I can find out what that question that you may have, and then we'll have both of them answer your questions. Somewhere, if you were to 
ask uh, someone that go attends a school in the Midwest, they would definitely have access to it. But so, so that's a good question, right? Because some of the things that I do, this is a better question than you think. Because certain things are not like, for, for public, like they're not commercials, right? So certain, you can do certain synchronization projects and a sync project is anytime you take your music and you put it to video, that counts as a sync, which just for anybody who happens to be interested in this stuff, if you have a PRO, which is a performing rights organization, there are three of them in the United States. There's ASCAP, CSAC, and BMI. I'm a member of ASCAP, or you on ASCAP? And the members of Royal, uh, Royal's a member of BMI. So you can be affiliated with either one. And so you can have music on the internet. And if you have music on the internet, your PRO won't collect money for you. They'll, who will collect money for you is a company called Sound Exchange. If you have money on the television, or if you have music on the television or on the radio, then your PRO will collect that money for you. And there's also a difference between the type of money that you get from a play versus like a stream versus a download. Like all of those things are, are different and you can kind of get paid multiple ways for it. So I didn't get to share this because I wanted to get to the Q&A quickly. But so when I was your age and I was in school, um, I was in the choir. And what I did was I arranged a piece of music for the choir. I wrote a piece of music for our choir and I had our school buy it from me. So I arranged a piece of music. I then asked the choir director, hey, can you play this piece of music in the spring concert? He said, yes. Okay, they bought every other piece of music that was there, so there's no reason why they couldn't buy mine. So 110 copies of this piece of music were purchased for $1.10 that I had the school print out. And then, what, the way that the company works is that they'll take an account every seat that's here. So they can say, hey, this auditorium seats 550 people, and they'll just throw that into an algorithm. And they'll say the tickets for this were $5 a piece, and when you send in the, the sheet, the program that has every song on it, they'll say, oh look, there were 18 selections that were done, and you are owed 1 18th of every $3 that came in here, and they'll cut you a check. So to answer the question about Count Me Out, can you find it? I'm sure that you can. It might be flooded under other music just because I put out a lot of music, but you can find it. Yes. So uh, do you have any advice for somebody who's trying to promote written like, stuff, like creative writing related stuff without like giving spoilers for it? Like telling how you can find for example, on the internet? Yes. Um, I think, so for any person who is in any type of creative field in general, I think a common misconception is like, I want to hide my things because if I put it out, then it can be stolen from me. Like if it's not copywritten or something, like someone can take it. That's not true anymore, right? Like once upon a time, that's somebody who lived maybe like 50 years ago. The moment that you put anything on the internet, it's yours. It is, it is yours. And that's because the way that a copyright works is it just says that it documents like the moment in your mind. So for you, with screenwriting and stuff like that, right? You can write your things down in your computer. Because your computer, when you save it, puts a timestamp on it. That timestamp will act as like your, your copyright, so it's protected. So then if you wanna get it out, Get some friends together, put your like put your skits together, your screenplay, whatever it is, because you need it in some kind of form, right? And once you have the the, the product, right, and people can see it, then you can go to a you can go to a production agency, you can go to a uh, to a publisher, whoever it is, and say, hey look, look at what my product is and look how many people like it. Because likely and this isn't to be like anything, it's likely you're gonna write so many more projects, right? And the project that is right now that you're holding on to isn't gonna be your best work. So it's okay to just like kind of put it out. The path, I would try to contact a publisher or try to contact an agency. 
so that that way you can get, you want to get in front of the right people. And the best way to do that right now is like you have a lot of time. So intern, figure out like where, who is going to purchase a screenplay, right? So literally Google who buys screenplays, who buys blah, blah. Figure out who your favorite screenplay writers are and send them a message on Instagram. DM them. I guarantee you no one knows who wrote the screenplay for like the Avengers, right? It's a billion dollar movie, it's massive, and people only know the actors. They don't know the writers. So the writer wants to feel important, they want to feel famous, and they probably only have 1,500 followers. Even though like they're millionaires. There are plenty of people out here who are millionaires, billionaires, investors, whatever, like they have no followers. Nobody right now is following the creative director who designs everything on Facebook. They're just not. However, that person is a multi-millionaire and they're accessible. You can send them a DM and they'll answer it. Any other questions? The question, the question was, how do you get past the fear of failing if something doesn't work? We're, we're both going to answer this question because I think that we may answer it different ways. Um, for me, it's just a matter of believing in yourself. And, and, and that sounds so, like, cliche, but it's the truth. If you really, like, believe in yourself and what you were going to do, like, I knew, no matter what, even though all those opportunities just kind of kept falling through, I knew I was going to get another opportunity because I believed in myself. It's like, all right, well, this wasn't the time for me. I don't know if anybody in here is spiritual, if you want to say the universe or energy or God or whichever thing it is for you. I knew that there was a plan for me. You know, so it's like, I'm going to make it, period. And if this doesn't work out, this is teaching me something. If anything, it's teaching me to be resilient. So just never give up on yourself. Like, never, ever quit on yourself. Um, and always understand too, I think this is very important, is that understand that if anybody ever tells you like you're not good enough or blah, 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 like if there's there any negativity coming to you, it's not for you. It's that person's own insecurities and they're trying to project them onto you. But yeah, you can do anything you want. So, I think he, he was elaborate with that. It also comes with if you put the work in, no matter no matter what, you'll get some some form of result. Um, it doesn't matter if your your IQ is in as much as high as hers, but if you work twice as hard as hers, your grades are going to be just as high, if not higher. Um, so it doesn't have to. It, this industry, even school, whatever industry you want to be in, if you work hard, if you outwork everybody else, you'll get the same results or better, and you'll appreciate it. Rather than, oh, uh, he's a one hit wonder and then he disappears. No, you keep working, you keep working, you build the catalog. Somebody said, when is the mix tape coming? <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> So the question for you is... Just one sec, because I kind of had pulled him out. He had his hand up for a minute. I think he just got overlooked because he was sitting in the cut. So we have our guests here, so they can answer these questions. 
So the question was, how do you juggle your life? You know, you're multiple things, right? You're an artist, family member, nephew, son, where, all those things, how do you juggle? How do you keep things balanced? You have to, one, you have to sacrifice. Two, you have to prioritize. Uh, you have to put it to, uh, aside time for you. Uh, for me, I'm on the road a lot, so, but I always, I'll make flights back home just to make sure I see my kids. Uh, it's just about, it's about how you prioritize your life. It's not, nobody can tell you what to do with your time. And if they do try, they don't need to be in your life. So it's all about all the, Figuring out what you want to do, where you want to go, and how you want to get there. Nobody else's path or their advice matters. It's, it's you. I think that was that was perfect. Um, and and just to offer like a different, even angle at that. Um, if you were listening to what I was saying before about how you use the platform to generate an income for yourself, in case you didn't understand, like. I said that he could make hundreds of dollars by doing something that took 10 minutes. That's the difference, right? Is that like your time is money. And you can, for perspective, now, most of us will end up working for someone. That's just because it's, it's set up that way. The system is kind of built that way. Not everyone can be an entrepreneur. That doesn't mean you shouldn't try. But what I'm saying is that when there's no cap, on like, hey, look, an hour of my time is worth $30. An hour of my time is worth $6.25, whatever it is. When you can come control where you spend your time because you can set your value, that's the difference. That's like, that's what makes it manageable and how you're able to figure out your priorities because you then have the luxury because you put in the work, you have the luxury of saying like, Okay, I can do this for two hours, but two hours of my time right now is gonna cost you $600. I can take the 15 minutes out to do, how much do you charge for a feature? Yeah, so that's gonna take, how long does it take you to cut that? Hour, about an hour. Okay, so if you want a feature, it's gonna cost $25,000. Hundred dollars. Sorry. If you want a feature, it's gonna cost twenty five hundred dollars for for an hour, for one hour's time. So you could be at work. To put this in perspective, you can be at work for eighty hours, eighty consecutive hours at a standard job to make twenty five hundred dollars. He's gonna make that in an hour. And then if he decides to be really ambitious and do ten features in a day. Now you have $25,000 in one day, as opposed to $25,000 in eight months. That allows you to be more flexible what you're, with your time and what you do with it. So it really kind of depends on like, do you want to put in the work now? Like, do you want to listen to what I just told you today about how you can start to build? Like, because you're only 16 right now. If you put what I told you in motion right now, by the time you're 22, by the time you're 23, you have the framework where you can do what you want to do with your life. Awesome. All right, so next question is, so I may not rap, I may not sing, I may not play an instrument, but suppose I do something else, suppose I dance, like how, how can I put myself out there to let other people know who are choreographers? Might be looking for dancers. Might be looking for people to to do routines with on videos at the Sixers game or wherever. How do I create that platform for myself? A. Take advantage of the felt, the fact that you have Google, right? So anytime you have a question, just type it into Google, I, and I mean that because it will likely have an answer on the other side. So if it's how do I get my, there's probably an answer there, right? So I'm gonna say. My answer to you is use Instagram. Use social media as a way to get to people because there are just a lot of people who don't have followers, right? Like, they just don't. And they're more likely to reply to their Instagram DM than they are to an email. Like, if, you want, if you're a dancer and you're like, yo, I wanna get my choreography on television to be like on the 76ers dance team or something like that, 
Google search every dancer in the 76ers dance team. Google search where they went to school and who their dance choreographer was. Google search who does the, you can find every single connection to the whole anything you wanna find and just send them all messages. And as long as you get one reply, you're in. Then it's just a matter of are you good? You know? Thank so, you. yeah, utilize it. Any other questions real quick? Well, um, so if that was, we'll take one more question and then after that, um, if anybody wants to come up and grab pictures or anything, we'll certainly take them with you. If you have any questions and you didn't want to ask and you're shy or you think about it later, follow us on the gram. I know both of us reply to every DM that we get. It just may take a little time, but we'll answer all your questions. So, you said. Can we get my man to Florida? Bro, you say you're a rapper. Uh, like, I want to be a producer, so like, you trying to buy the beat off. I'll buy, I'll buy a beat off for you. I'll buy a beat off for you. You guys know? I do. All right, who's going to talk? Who's going to talk? Just ask. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, faculty and staff. Thank you all so much. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, with that being said, listen up real quick. If I can have your attention for a second. I'll wait. So I think it's moments like this where we need to take advantage of. I hope all of you have listened to what was being said by Kevin and Royal today. All right, and these things are very important. So for some of you, maybe it didn't hit where you are right now in life. But if nothing else, I hope you heard about being persistent, about being committed, and making sure that you're giving your all every single time. All right, so again, Elisha just, just took a swing, and that just happened for him. Now think about how many opportunities out there for us if we just are willing to step up to the plate and then take a swing. And Elisha was determined, I wasn't gonna give the microphone. He said, Mr. Lump, stop playing, please. So, I like your tenacity, I like your persistence, and I believe it's gonna pay off for you, Elisha. Now, with that being said, uh, I have little slips. For those of you who may have an Instagram account, if you guys get a chance, uh, you can actually copy this down now. Uh, if you have your, I am giving you an opportunity to have your phones out, because some of you have them out already, trying to look up songs. All right? You can uh, copy this down, that's, that way you'll have uh, his account, and then there's an opportunity for us because we do have some flexible time here. Uh, if you are willing to take a picture with Royal and Kevin McCove, uh, we're going to create that opportunity for you. Now, here's the kicker. Now, I'm not sure if he's able to, but he's able to, listen, he's able to take pictures. Now, here's what I will tell you, real quick. There's another copy. Now I know this might seem strange, but let me know if I'm out of order for a second. You, this place, see, I've been watching you for a while. I just gotta let you know that I'm really feeling your style. You see, I have.
and we're royal, uh, we can do that. If not, if not, we can easily make our way back to period two. You can get pictures. 